Hey, and welcome to another edition of uh, You Down With MMT. Uh, right now, I am reading from uh, the MMT uh, textbook uh, created by William or Bill Mitchell, L. Randall Ray, Martin Watts. Uh, you can get this on Amazon, but right on uh, Amazon and other places like that. But anyways, right now, I am re I'm starting to read from Chapter 4. And if you want to know or want to hear me read uh, 1 through 3, uh, it's on this channel, but it's also on anchor.fm uh, slash talking, oh no, oh yeah, talking underscore financially. Uh, that I started, I started there and moved it up here. Anyway, so let's see, chapter four, the system of national income and, and product accounts. 4.1, measuring national output. The system of national income and production accounts, or product accounts, or NIPA, is the framework assembled by national statistics statisticians for measuring economic activity. In this chapter, we look at national income accounting, that is, how we measure total, total national spending and its components, as well as national income and its uh, components. Okay. The most, the most important measure of economic production is gross domestic product or GDP. Let us first provide a formal definition. GDP is the measure of all final goods and services evaluated and market prices which are produced per period of time, say a quarter uh, or a year. Note that GDP is a flow measure. A month, quarter, and year are the most common periods over which the flow of production is measured. Let us emphasize the most important parts of the definition. Produce, produced per period of time, this includes only goods and services produced over the time period and would uh, exclude goods sold this period that had been produced previously. Hence, GDP excludes sales of used goods. Final goods and services. These are the goods and services sold to final users, whether they are consumers, firms, or government. Households buy final consumer goods and services. Firms buy investment goods to increase capacity, and government buys goods and higher services. Intermediate goods and services are ex excluded. For example, an auto manufacturer buys tires to put on new cars for sale. These are intermediate uh, goods. If we were to count those tires as part of GDP and then count the value of automobiles produced, we would double count the value of tires since the value of the automobiles would include all the intermediate goods and services that go into producing the automobiles. For that reason, we count only the value of, the, of a final uh, goods and services evaluated at market prices. We calculate the value of good, uh, sorry, final goods and services at market prices. This means that GDP is calculated at nominal values. We use annual, uh, we use another, excuse me, measure of GDP to take account of the impact of price changes called real GDP. Note that unless to specifically to designated as real GDP, when we say GDP, we, were, we mean a nominal GDP calculated at current market prices. We will discuss real GDP below. The statisticians who Compile the NIPA must t make many decisions about what to include and what to exclude. While the decisions are not arbitrary, it is important to recognize that they that they are conventions. That they, that they yeah they are conventions. In other words, there there is nothing uh, sacrosanct about them, and the con conventions could be changed by international agreements. For example, uh, washing your own dishes at home is not included in GDP. However, if you if you hire your neighbor to wash your dishes, that should be counted in GDP as dishwashing services. Note that we said should, because if you pay your neighbor under the table and neither of you reported, the transaction may not get captured uh, in the official numbers. 
This might, uh, this makes some sense because in the first case, there was no monetary exchange and no market price at which the service took place. While in the second, there is the market price exchange and no market price at which the service took place. While the while in the second, there is the market price uh, that you paid for the service. However, by excluding all the unpaid household services performed, including cleaning, repairs, and upkeep, and child and elder care, the NIPA numbers exclude a huge proportions or proportion of the uh, nation's production. More importantly, it undercounts the contribution made to production by women because they, because they perform a disproportionate amount of unpaid work. By, uh, many economists have called for reform of the accounting conventions to include more unpaid work in order to give greater recognition to the economic and social value of such so-called women's work. GDP also excludes the black market, the green market, and much of the production in the informal sector. This is largely due with the difficulty of collecting data. Black market transactions are illegal, even though the good, the good of or service per se may be legal. For example, the sale of cigarettes is only illegal if duty has not been paid. On the other hand, the drug and, se and sex trades often involves illegal transactions in many countries and, and illegal in illegal goods and services. In the gray market, legal non counterfeit goods are sold outside normal distribution channels. For example, if a brand of cameras is very expensive in a particular country, an enterprising local trader might or may import them from a country that where the price is low and sell them in, comp in competition with the local op official suppliers of uh, the camera. Many, ma many nations do attempt to establish or uh, yeah, estimate excuse me, such activity and even include at least some of it in official measure of GDP. Much of the informal activity in such in, in similar to household production discussed above, for example, in many developing nations, much of the food produ production does not reach formal markets. It is consumed by farmers and shared or sold in local markets without being subject to proper recording. Other activity is under the, the table and goes under record, uh, unrecorded, excuse me, to escape, to escape taxes. While the size of the black market is sometimes estimated in countries, typically it is not included in their official measure in, of GDP. However, the, in late 2014, the Office of National Statistics in Italy announced that the estimation of GDP would uh would in future include the best yeah the best uh get to us estimation uh, estimates it could make for illegal activity notably drug trafficking prostitution and smuggling services cigarettes and alcohol that was from the economist 2014. let's have a little bit there we go okay so let's see Oh, by the way, I'm now on page 52 for those who actually have this um, textbook. Uh, another problem is that GDP is not necessarily a good measure of production in terms of its you know, production in terms of its contribution to economic well-being. For example, a widget factory might pollute the air and water supply while it is producing its output. The social health and environmental costs are not deducted from the value of the output produced for the purposes of measuring GDP. However, if society had to hire workers and produce ma machinery in order to clean out the pollution coming equipment for the purpose of, uh, oh, okay, no, I got that. In order to clean up the pollution coming from the producing factory that would be counted towards GDP. Ironically, this production would then count twice uh, towards GDP, once for the value of the widgets produced and secondly for the value of cleaning up the environment mess, environmental mess. 
Furthermore, if neighbors of the widget factory get sick from pollution, then the healthcare spending required to treat them also gets cut at GDP. For that reason, GDP can be a poor measure of economic well-being. As polluting industries might make a negative contribution to our general living standards, even though they increase GDP. Another example is when a uh, with the when a nation that produces great volumes of military equipment might record the same GDP as a nation that produces a lot of healthcare and educational outputs. Using the GDP measure as a proxy for national progress might be quite misleading in this case. It is highly likely that the latter nation has higher material living standard for its population. Still, another problem is in the the quality. There we go. It does not make any difference to the calculation of GDP whether, uh, whether almost all production goes to the top 10% of individuals or households so that the bottom 90% gets nothing next to nothing or vice versa. The GDP measure simply adds up national production without taking account uh, of the distribution and the output. This can make GDP a bad measure for comparing living standards across the across, across countries. It is common to divide a nation's GDP by its population in order to derive the per capita GDP. We can rank nations according to their per capita GDP measured in a common currency. We can clarify or classify some as rich, some as middle income, and some as poor. However, per capita GDP simply provides a measure of the average and that can be highly misleading as a guide to the standard of living in the typical resident of a nation. For example, the average could be 35,000 per capita in two different or very different nations. In country A, the share of the GDP of the top 1% might be 90%, leaving the remaining 99% of the population to share only 10% of the nation's output. While in country B, the distribution could be equal or nearly equal with 99% uh, of the nation's output. Okay, no, I got that. Uh, the percent uh, of the population earnings within a few thousand dollars of 35,000 average. Clearly, economic well being would be more widely shared in country B with very few poor people, but also few people enjoying a living standard are. Uh, Okay, hold on. Uh, living standard, uh, much above the average. The uh, the Gini coefficient, which we discuss later in this chapter, is often used in, to used to measure income inequality. There are alternative measures of economic well being and uh, economic well being that attempt to get around these problems. Some try to measure household production. Others take account of inequality, poverty, and access to education and health care. Some measure to deduct social health and environmental costs. For example, our hypothesis or hypothetical widget uh, factory might actually make a net negative contribution to economic well-being, so it would be beneficial to close the factory and thereby increase social welfare even while foregoing the consumption of widgets. As a real-world example, tobacco smoking increases GDP due to sales of tobacco spending to capture smoke to make indoor air cleaner and high levels of spending on health care for tobacco users all, and all of those who suffer from the effects of a secondhand smoke. Eliminating tobacco use would undoubtedly enhance well-being but might reduce GDP. For those, for these reasons, when addressing economic, social, and environmental well-being, we need alternative measures to GDP. Still, GDP is the most commonly used measure, and it does have one big advantage. It focuses largely on the monetary value of output. As we have discussed, the profit motive driven uh, drives capitalistic production. It can be uh, characterized as M. Uh, M uh, 
CM, that is, it be begins with money, typically is commodity for sale, which is C, for more money, which is M. For that reason, GDP is an appropriate measure for a capitalist sphere of production because it focuses on production for sale in exchange for money. Yet, GDP is not perfect even for that narrow purpose because, as we have already noted, it does includes in input in monetary value or some production that is not actually sold. The most important example is the service services of owner occupied housing the idea is that the how the, the homeowner consumes housing services over time if the home is not owned we can use instead of instead the rent paid as a value of the housing services consumed by the renter however many families live in homes that uh, they purchased so there are no market transactions taking place Note that there that when a new home is purchased, it, it is counted as residential investment and is included in the investment category, not the consumption category. See the, ne see the next section. It will uh, it would not it would not make sense to count the entire market value of a home as consumption even ever over the period. Further, most uh, homeowners have purchased and you a used home to so that purchase purchase so that purchase will not show up in either the investment category or the consumption category. For that reason, the input monetary value of the housing services over the period is counted as consumption, whether or not the home is new. Still, by uh, including inputted value or our measure of GDP deviates from the ideal of capturing the total value of production that is sold at market serve prices over the period. I will be right back. Hey, welcome back. Uh, again, I am reading the MMT Macroeconomic Book. Uh, I am on page 53, which is in the fourth chapter, and I'm on 4.2, which is components of GDP. The national income and produce uh, and pro product and accounts, which is NIPA, divide the nation's output into four main categories and add, and add a fifth to account for... for, for uh, damn. <laughs> and add a fifth to account for foreign production that is available to the nation's residents. These are consumption, investment, government, expenditure, exports, uh, imports. Each of these can be further divide, sub subdivided. Consumption, which is uh, the letter C, consumption includes domestic Consumption of goods and services by households. Keep in mind from our definition of GDP that only final outputs uh, that are produced within a given time period and is currently produced final goods and services are included. Intermediate uh, intermediate goods and services are excluded as, an, as are sales of used goods. Generally speaking, all good uh, peri uh, current period spending on goods and services might, uh, by households is included as consumption. The only major exceptions are the purchase of a newly built house, which is a uh, which, as noted, is included as investment spending and the inclusion of imp inputted housing services of owner occupied homes, which is co uh, counter uh, counted as consumption. What is most confusing for students is that household investments is shared and bonds is not included in GDP at all. And this is because shares and bonds are not currently produced goods and services. Indeed, purchase of financial assets of a type is treated by the NIPA system as saving, not as spending. Investment, which is I, Investment uh, in, uh, includes three main categories, capital investments by firms and inventory investment by firms and real estate investment by households. Investment expenditure increases the production capacity of the economy and expands what we define as potential GDP. 
Therefore, it adds to current spending, but also increases the capacity of the economy to absorb increases in future spending without inflation. Capital investment includes spending on plant and e plant and equipment, factories and machines. For example, increasingly uh, increasingly uh, investment include purchases of software and other non physical but long lasting inputs to produce production. As discussed, we do not want to include um, intermediate goods and GDP, for, so purchases of inputs that are used up in the production process are not included as investments. Here we are referring to inputs such as electricity, input and investments somewhere are, is as somewhat arbitrary, as so, and so it will rely on accounting convention which conventions which will be related to the inputs and useful life. Again, purchases of financial assets are not included as investments. For example, if one firm takes over another, that is not an investment for the, pur for the purpose of measuring GDP. <clears throat> also note that if a household buys a car, it is, accounted, it is counted as consumption, but if a business buys a car, it is counted as, as an investment. Even if the firm operates out of the out of a home office of the same household, unsold goods and are prefer, referred to as inv inventories. A rise in inventories is also treated as an investment, even if the firm did not plan to exchange to change the stock of investments or inventory. Excuse me, uh, stock of inventories. A firm may produce more output than it can sell during the accounting period, increasing investment in, in inventories. If a firm sells more output than planned, its stock of inventories falls. This is treated as negative investment. A swing of invest, inventory investments can be quite, uh, quite wide because it is difficult for firms to sell precisely the amount that they planned. Finally, real estate investment uh, includes new construction of residential and non-residential buildings. Sales of existing homes as well as existing commercial buildings are not included as investment. Sales of land also would uh, would, would uh, not be accounted as investment. When in doubt whether the purchase of an asset would be counted as investment or simple or simply a purchase of an asset, a useful rule of thumb is to consider whether labor was used during the period in which to produce the asset. If it was, then this is an investment. If not, there is there then it is simply an asset purchase, which is treated as a portfolio adjustment, but not an investment. Newly produced machines, factories, houses, and apartment buildings all require current labor. Uh, services to produce them and to ha and hence count as investments. Sales of stocks, bonds, existing houses, or existing factories do not use labor in the current period to produce them, so they are not defined as investments. Government spending, which is G. Government spending includes government purchase purchases of final goods and services. Note that it does not include government transfer payments such as spending of welfare and social security. This is because if we were to include transfers, we would double count since most transfer payments will then be spent on consumer or consumption goods and services and hence include it uh, included in C as described above. Government transfer Payments are not purchases of current produced goods and services, so are not part of GDP. Government purchase can be further divided in between consumption and investment, or capital. Expenditures. The division between these two subcategories is somewhat arbitrary. Government consumption, expen uh, wait a minute, government uh, uh, consumption, Expenditures are for goods and services that are used relatively quickly, firefighting, firefighting services, uh, po uh, postal delivery, and air traffic control. While government investment purchases are for long-lasting improvements, fire trucks, roads, air traffic control, uh, wait a minute, uh, roads, uh, sorry, I, I uh, messed up on that one, uh, fire trucks, roads, in airports, there we go. Typically, any spending uh, whose impact on 
impact are exhausted within a 12 month period are considered to be consumption uh, consumption. Uh, otherwise, they are classified as investments. Do not get confused by the use of a term uh, use of the terms uh, consumption and investment. While when apply when applied to the division of government spending by type, there are th th these are under G category and not under the C or I category discussed above. Exports or X minus X uh, imports M or net exports, NX. Imports are goods and services sold abroad. Imports are goods and services produced abroad from domestic use, or sorry, for domestic use. If imports are greater than exports, then the net exports are negative. Alternatively, if imports are less than exports, then net exports are positive. Again, these can be consumption type of goods or investment type of goods, but if they are sold abroad or bought from abroad, then they are counted in the NX category or net exports. Category and not in the C or I categories. Exports add to domestic spending to stimulate uh, production, whereas imports represent a drain on domestic spending. 4.3 equivalents of three measures of GDP. GDP can be measured in three ways, namely the expenditure approach, the production approach, and the income approach. These appro approaches subject to st statistical discrepancy should give equal measure of GDP. The expenditure approach is conceptually the simplest. It works on the principle that total expenditures denote the value of the production that have been bought and given the inclusion of inventory investments or investment in the definition of investment. It measures the value of total production. The production or value added approach is based on summary, summing the gross outputs of every class of enterprise and then netting out intermediate consumption. The income approach works for or works on the principle that the incomes of the productive productive factors or producers must be equal to the value of the pr product and thus measures the GDP by summing all producers' incomes. Sorry, wipe in the eyes. Um, expenditure approach. The expenditure approach estimates GDP by calculating the sum of final expenditure on goods and services measured in current market prices. As we discussed above, GDP or GDP Y is the sum of consumption C, investment I, government spending G, and net export NX or X and M. This is this can be written as the following ent ent entity: uh, Y just equals C plus I plus G plus X and M. Or yeah, anyway. Uh, and identity is an algebraic, 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 I'll just say, uh, equation, which always holds uh, because of the way the, vari the variables and the, the equations are defined. This is where it just dicey for me because I don't know that type of uh, math. Anyway, uh, here we are drawing on the fact that the total final expenditures, which represent GDP, can be broken down into a series of components which can be defined. Production approach. This production this approach measures gross value added. First, it is necessary to calculate the gross value of domestic output over, say, a year. This will include the value of the output control, uh, con contributed at all stages of production and will take account of intermediate consumption. The cost of raw material supplies and services which were used up in the production of gross output. We then subtract the intermediate consumption from the gross value of domestic output to obtain the gross value added. As before, note uh, as before, note that if we do not subtract the intermediate consumption, then we fall into error of double counting. Consider a three-stage production process, which culminates in the final sale of uh, woolen coats 
to consumers. Initially, sheep farmers incur costs of feed, uh, of, uh, feed and the like and, rear, and rearing the sheep and pay wages to the sheep herds. Yeah, sheep herds and to the sheep shearers. They then sell the wool to a woolen uh, mill, which pr processes it by the uh, by the employment of labor and the producers. The woolen mill sells pr pr the processed wool to the manufacturing manufacturer of the coats, which employs labor and other producers in the production of the woolen coats. For simpl simplicity, we assume that the manufacturer then sells these final goods directly to consumers. At each stage of the production process, the value added to by the producers mu must be calculated. So, for example, the value added to the woolen mill is the value of sales of the processed wool, wool, wool minus the cost of buying the unprocessed wool and raw materials used to process the wool and the electricity costs incurred in the production process. Then we can write a value added to the in, in value added in the production of woolen coats uh, equals gross value output minus value of intermediate consumption, which has been summed up over the stages of production. The sum of the value added acro uh, across every glass, glass class of, in, of enterprise is known as GDP at factor cost. GDP at factor cost plus indirect taxes less and less subsidies on product uh, products is GDP at producer price. Income approach. The third way of measuring GDP is to calculate the sum of primary incomes distributed to resident producers of goods and services. This method adds together the producers' incomes that uh, can that firms pay in exchange for their services, namely wages for labor, uh, interest for capital, rent for land, and profit for capitalists. This defines GDP at factor cost. Factor, yeah, no factor cost. It is then necessary to add indirect taxes minus subsidies to get a measure at the market prices, and it turned and in turn depreciates our capital consumption allowance to obtain GDP. Under the production approach, the value added at each stage of production is the additional income that it generated. So the equivalence of the production and income approaches to the measurement of GDP is clear. In 4.4, we have GDP versus GNP. Now, GNP is part of the member is gross, is gross national produ product. Basically, what we keep for ourselves as far as the product goes, without actually selling overseas. Uh, GDP is is the total total value of goods and services produced produced within a nation, regardless of the ownership of the firm producing them. The gross national product is the net total value of goods and services produced by residents of the national uh, of the nation, regardless of the location of the production. I was close with that anyway. Uh, GDP includes earnings from production within the domestic economy that goes to foreigners. GNP does not include earnings from the production within the domestic economy that goes to foreigners, but includes foreign earnings and domestic firms and residents operating abroad. Thus, the financial financial flows be, between the domestic and external sectors are not confined to net exports. Until the early 1990s, the U.S. tended to the to use GNP, while many nations used GDP. However, since the since then, the U.S. has conformed to the adopted GDP, although it still reinforced GNP for the U.S. There is no major difference between GDP and GNP because earnings from production of, in the U.S. that go to for foreigners are nearly or nearly balanced against uh, foreign earnings of the U.S. residents. For many other nations, however, these uh, there are there is a large difference between GDP and GNP. Uh, because, for example, uh, their residents have large investments in factories operating abroad. Ireland is a standout because the example of their residents have large investments in factories operating abroad. Oh, sorry. I've already read that one. Uh, Ireland is a standout 
Example of a country where these two measures diverge because of the presence of many large foreign-owned firms that have been attracted to locate head offices in that nation as a result of its low corporate tax regime. 4.5. Measuring Gross and Net National Income Measuring Gross National Income We initially examined Gross National Income, or GNI, from the perspective of what can be done with an income uh, individual can consume it, consume it, pay taxes, or save it. As a simplification, we ignore the difference between GNP and GDP, so we can write, this is 4.2, if you have this book, it's Y minus, C, or no, equal, C plus S plus T equals GDP, uh, equals C plus 1, or I, plus G, plus NX. Uh, here we use Y to represent income. S is gross savings or saving, and T is total taxes paid. We can think of S as a res as a residential. It is disposable after tax. Uh, it's disposable after tax income that is not spent on consumption. We can easily manipulate the above identity to obtain a useful uh, identity based on Keynesian saving. S equals I plus G minus T plus NX. What is G minus T? It is government deficit spending. The deficit, uh, the difference between government spending and is total net revenue from taxation. We'll make more use of identity 4.3 later. Measuring net uh, national income. At the aggregate level, national income equals national output because we, as discussed previously, the production of output generates equivalent income. We will define net national income as NNI, and then we derive a number of subcategories of income. It is more convenient to begin with GNP so as to include foreign earnings of domestic residents. GNP equals gross national income, or GNI to tightly NNI, we need to subtract depreciation and taxes. Over the course of, of a production period, month, quarter, or year, some of the production uh, facilities, plants, and equipment wear out or depreciate. We subtract depreciation from our gross national income or na gross national production per product, GNP, to obtain uh, net national product or NNP. We then subtract uh, indirect business taxes, sales, and excise taxes to obtain NNT, or NNI, sorry. The reason for deducting uh, the depreciation, wait, uh, de yeah, deducting depreciation and business taxes to obtain a measure of national income that is actually available to purchase national output. We subtract the depreciation because producers must uh, set aside a portion of gross income to replace the capital that is wearing out. The subtract in uh, indirect business taxes because these reduce the amount of income that can be paid uh, out of production to summarize. Begin with GNP, subtract depreciation or NMP uh, equals NMP, uh, subtract indirect taxes, sales and excise taxes, and uh, equals NNI. Next, we want to obtain a measure of per, uh, personal income or PI following, oh, flowing, excuse me, to households. We subtract corporate taxes, payroll taxes, and undistributed profits since the taxes go to the government and, and uh, undistributed profits are retained by producers, leaving us with the income to be paid out to households. However, we do we need to add transfer payments made by government to households as well as a personal uh, as well as personal interest income received by households to obtain PI to summarize these operations. We begin with net national income or NNI, subtract corporate taxes and uh, undistributed profits and payroll taxes, and transfer payments and personal interest uh, income or equals PI. 
We need to get a measure of PI after taxes paid by individuals. So we subtract uh, personal taxes from PI to obtain personal disposable income or PDI. This is the after-tax income available to, uh, to individuals to spend and save. Beginning with PDI, we then subtract personal consumption interest paid to business and transfer payments made by foreigners to give us personal savings of PS. We start from uh, from that. We start from uh, personal uh, disposable income, subtract personal consumption, subtract interest paid to business, subtract personal transfer payments to foreigners or equals PS. Note that gross saving, which is as defined uh, in the equa uh, equation 4.3, is not it, it is not it is not the same as personal savings or PS because it is based on total income, not PDI. I think that's personal disposable income, and we have uh, not deducted interest paid and to business and transferred to for uh, in, uh, transfers to foreigners yet. In 4.6, GDP growth and the price def deflation. Be right back. And welcome back. Uh, we are now on 4.6, page 57. GDP growth and the price deflator. We are we had defined nominal GDP as a measure of the value of output as as current market prices. We often want to measure economic growth, which is the growth of GDP over time. The problem is that prices as well as output change over time. If we find the GDP in nominal today is 100, 100 times greater than it was 100 years ago, does that mean that we enjoy 100 times more physical output? Clearly not. It, if prices have also risen, this to make account in, uh, to to take account of this, we often want to deflate nominal GDP. That is correct. Our that is correct. Our measure for the change in prices to get an idea of real economic growth. The idea is simple, but in practice, that is a very difficult thing to do. Let it, let us start with the ex conceptual problem. Suppose we want to compare GDP in 2018 to GDP in, 20, in 2002 to see how much real output grew over the over the 16-year period. To find nominal GDP in each year, we we take the current market price of that year and multiply it by the qual the quantity produced that year. For expo uh, exp exposition. Purposes, we are simplifying here by taking the quantity and price of a, sing of a single aggregate good as, as we call GDP. GDP 2002 uh, equals P 2002 times Q 2002. Uh, let's see. Four, uh, this, for this one, the last one was 4.3A. And this one is 4.3b, GDP 2018 equals P 2018 uh, times Q 2018, where GDP measures GDP uh, at current prices in year T uh, because, or no, based on production level Q and market price P. However, we are interested in a comparison of levels of real GDP over time in order to correct our uh, measure for the exchange for the change in prices first we have to decide which years per, uh, prices to use as a base we always calculate uh, uh, wait, we, we always calculate real gdp over time in terms of base year we could choose 2002 or 2018 or any other year as the, as the base let us say we choose to use the prices of 1985. This makes it clear that we do not have to use prices of 2002 or 2018. Uh, then we do the following calculation. 4.4a uh, is our GDP 2002 equals P uh, 1985 times Q 2002. Oh, wait, I said 2002, is it? Okay, so our, GD, our GDP is 2002. Is this over clear or not? 4.4B is 
same, but 2018 equals P1985 times Q2018, where RG, RGDP denotes real uh, GDP in year, T, in year T based on 1985 prices. So long as we have used the same base year to calculate real GDP to both 2002 and 2018, we can determine real GDP growth over a 16-year period, but the measure will reflect to some degree the cho uh, some degree the choice of the base year. Prices were considered that when we consider many goods rather than a single good. Uh, in practice, statisticians update the, ba uh, the base year through time so that they will always use a fairly recent base year. Thus, you will be unlikely to use 1900 as the base year to calculate real GDP for 2018. The older the base year used for calculation, the greater the problem encountered in calculating real GDP. We will, use, we will return to these problems uh, shortly before we do. There are two other useful concept, uh, concepts related to calculation of real GDP. First, there is a GDP deflation deflator, which is an indicator of price changes. It is defined year T as follows. This is 4.5. GDP, or I'm sorry, yeah, GDP D equals... GDP slash RGDP, a lot of acronyms here, where GDP denotes the GDP deflator for year T. Changes in magnitude of GDP deflator over time gives us a measure of price changes for output as a whole. Note that is that it is possible for prices in general to go down as well as up. However, over the past century, uh, deflations have been relatively rare and short-lived. Uh, yeah. uh, our goal has been to develop a method for adjusting GDP for price changes. And price it, in, in practice, it is more difficult, much more difficult uh, than suggested by the earlier discussion. As noted, we used a simplification to calculate a nominal GDP as price time quantity of a single aggregate GDP uh, good. However, GDP is defined as the value of total output measure as at current prices. Conceptually, we have a set vector of prices, one for each good or service sold. And a set or vector of question, uh, quantity uh, qu quantities uh, an empty and entry for every item sold, and then we sum each uh, individual cell p equal p times q. Or I think it's uh, was a purchase. I can't remember right now, but anyway, uh, q uh, p uh, times q for the uh, for the ith time. To obtain GDP, that does not seem too difficult. We simply recognize that output is uh, heterogeneous, and so it can only be aggregate in, term, in, in nominal terms, not in quantity terms. In practice, major problems are created if we try to measure the value of real GDP in terms of another year's prices. Let us say we use 1985 as our uh, base year and apply 1985 prices to goods and services sold in 2018. How do we uh, put a 19, 1985 price on the iPads sold in 2018? There were no iPads uh, sold in, in, in 85, and indeed nothing comparable existed. And to reverse the problem, how can we find a 1985 price for manual typewriters sold in 1900 to value real GDP. That year in terms of 1985 prices, clearly the composition of output changes both in terms of what is sold and the uh, quality of the items sold. The typical personal computer sold today is very much faster than the one sold in 1990, even though the nominal prices and price has hardly changed. It should be obvious that the older the base you're, you, you're chosen, the more acute the problem. 
This is why the recent year statisticians have increasingly favored the use of chain weighted measure of GDP, which involves a lag of only one year. In the next section, we discuss this measure in more detail. And 4.7, measuring chain weighted real GDP. The chain weighted real GDP can be defined as follows. RGDB, RDB, DP, sorry, equals uh, P, T equals one plus uh, P um, slash two X, uh, X and Q, T. Okay, anyway, uh, this measure averages the prices over two consecutive years, and as well as discussed below, this is a particularly useful for measuring real GDP growth. In practice, econo economists are more interested in real GDP than in levels of real GDP. This favors the chain-weighted measure even more over the cal calculation of real GDP on the base year that is periodically changed. Every time the base year is changed, real GDP needs to be re re recalculated for every year. That in turn will change the, uh, uh, the calculations rather of real GDP growth rates over time. And in an appropriate sense, economy, economic history is rewritten every time the base uh, year is changed. With the chain-weighted approach, however, the calculation of real GDP growth is invariant to changes of the base year. Changing the base year will change the calculated levels of real GDP, but not the growth rate for the house, for the historical series of real GDP that will instead use the chain-weighted measures. Changes in this measure can are, are sorry are calculated using the weights of adjustment or adju adjacent years. These annual changes are chained position of output ever, over time. Thus, the U.S. Bureau of Economic and uh, Analysts uh, Analysts B R B uh, B E A is a bit able to conclude uh, calculate uh, an index that. Um, uses weights that are appropriate for each period. It thereby avoids the rewriting of economic history that that was, uh, results from updating the base period of a fixed weighted index as well as the substitution bias that is uh, inherent in fixed weighted uh, indexes. Uh, Landfield and Parker, 97, uh, I guess 59, page 59 and 60. In other words, once the B has calculated real GDP growth for any set of years using the chain weighted uh, approach, it will not need to do any re recalculations because the base year prices used for that set of years will not change. This is still more difficult than it sounds, but we will not go into further details here. By the way, it's uh, BEA as far as B goes. Uh, 4.8, measuring CPI inflation. The CPI index, in this section, we look at the measurement of the prices of consumption or consumer goods bought by households and make Brief references to producer goods bought by firms, including raw materials and intermediate goods to be used in production. These prices could go down, but the usual trend is for rising prices. The index most commonly used to calculate inflation of consumer goods prices at Consumer Price Index, or CPI, is defined as follows. An index based on the cost of a fixed basket of consumer goods and services. In the construction of the uh, CPI index, the statistician needs to decide what, what consumer goods and services to include, their respective quantities, weights, and how to calculate the corresponding price. The chosen base, basket, uh, basket of goods and services is trend is is in intended, excuse me, to be representative of the purchases needed or made by a typical household, and is periodically 
updated. The statistician chooses the base year much like the choice of the base year to be used in calculating real GDP. The CPI then represents the cost of the market basket of consumer goods and services. The measure is usually expressed for a specific uh, special SPATIAL uh, area such as a capital city or a weighted average of all capital cities in a nation. The items include in the Australian CPI published by the Australian Bureau of, of Statistics in March 2016 are shown in, okay, there's a table of, of, of stuff here. Uh, it is under 4.1 table. Within each major group, there are many items included. There are food and non-alcoholic beverages, alcohol, tobacco, clothing and footwear, housing, furnishings, household equipment and services, health, transport, uh, communication, recreation and culture, education, and insurance and financial services. If the price... If the prices of all these items uh, in the basket changed at the time, uh, at the same time, uh, same rate, excuse me, same rate, one period to the next, then the change in the cost of the basket would be easy to calculate and period by period. But in reality, the individual uh, prices, uh, in the individual prices generally change at different rates. So that relative prices are also changing. The statistician thus needs a single summary measure to determine whether the basket overall is rising in cost or not. That is the role that the price index plays. It is weighted average of the price movements in the given basket relative to some base period. In compiling a summary measure such as the CPI and a statistician, the statistician must choose whether to use base weighting or current weighting to compile the index. A base weighted index uh, examines the shifts in prices of the, ba uh, the basket of goods and services using the bas base period quantities purchased. It is referred to as a late spares index after the German economist who first compiled such measures. The base weighted index allows us to see how much a basket that consumers bought in the, in the, in the base period would cost in the current period. A current weighted index uses the current quantity uh, purchased of each good and services uh, good, good and service in the basket as the weighted as a way to compile the average measure. This is commonly called a Pache index after the German statistician uh, who developed the measure. The current weight index allows us to, to see how much basket that consumers buy in the current period would have cost in the base and base base period. Uh, see, da -da. a current weight index uses the cut uh, the current quantity purchase of each good and service in the basket. Wait a minute. Is that right? Yeah, I did. Never mind. These measures provide different ways of estimating the change in the cost of a basket of goods and services over time. However, stat statisticians tend to favor the use of the less beer index and to calculate the CPI because it requires less information. The only new data that are required are the current prices of the time of the times the items in the basket. The quantity making up the the quantities making up the basket and the correspondent cor, corresponding base year prices are already known. This allows for more timely uh, pr publication of the CPI, which is desirable since it is important policy variable uh, used by central bankers and measures in formulating monetary and fiscal policy. Not to mention to use in labor and other contracts and for indexing the values of transfers such as pensions and other benefits. Uh, let's see. For our simple, to simplify our analysis, imagine a basket of goods and services that comprises two items, bread and cheese. We are glossing over the obvious question of don't, don't these people wear clothes? 
Table 4.2 shows the hypothetical data would be will be uh, working with to illustrate the construction of the price index. Now, the Table 4.2 hypothetical data for basket of goods and services is, let's see, year one, cheese is four um, per unit, and quantity is three, expenditure is 12, and expenditure based on qualities in other years is 16. Uh, year one of bread is two, uh, unit is nine, Expenditure is 18, and expenditures based on the quantity in other years is 20. Total and expenditure is 30, and 36 in expenditure based on quantity in each year. Year two, cheese is five uh, per uh, price per unit. Bread is three price per unit. Uh, quantity is four for cheese and 10 is for bread. Uh, expenditure is 20 for cheese, 34 bread, and 50 total. Expenditures based on quantity in each year, uh, 15 for cheese, and 27 for bread, and 42 in total as far as that part goes. In year one, the price per unit of cheese is $4, and three units are consumed every, overall. So total expenditure uh, on cheese in year one is $12, as I, as I just put. Uh, the price of a loaf of bread is two dollars, and nine and nine units are consumed a year, making total expenditure on bread eighteen. Overall, the basket goods cost thirty dollars a year. Year one, it is. Uh, in year two, ch uh, cheese rises to five dollars per unit, and four uh, four units are consumed, whereas bread rises to three dollars a loaf, and then and ten units are consumed. Overall, the basket of goods in two uh, in two now costs fifty dollars uh, from column three. Note that if we wanted to know uh, wanted to know what the quantities uh, purchased in year one would cost in year two, we multiply each quantity by its price in year two. Column four provides the provides the answer and uh, forty two dollars, which we calculated uh, using the following data: cheese five times three equals fifteen, bread three times nine equals twenty seven, and total is forty two. Uh, conversely, column three shows the expenditure in year two based on year two prices and year two purchases. Summarily, if we wanted to know what the basket would at would cost in year one based on year two uh, year one prices and year two uh, per weighted or current weighted uh, base weighted CBI used uh, using weight, uh, base weights or year or year one quantities, we will set the index in one year to one hundred, and year two the index would be used using year one weights. CPI year two equals CPI year one times total expenditure in year two. Column four divided by total expenditures in year one, column three. CPI year two equals 100 times 42 uh, slash 30 equals 140. Current weight of CPI using current way, uh, weights uh, year two quantities, we will again set the index in year one to one hundred. In year two, the index would be using uh, would be using year one weights. CPI is in uh, year two equals CPI year one times total expenditure in, in year two, uh, column three divided by total expenditure in year one, column four. CPI uh, second year equals 100 times 50 uh, slash 36 equals 138.9. Thus, we can see that it does, does make a difference which weighted approach we use. Rate of growth of CPI index. We have generated two CPI indexes, one base weighted and one current weighted. Over two years, we use uh, so we can, sorry, over two years, so we can uh, we can so we can calculate a measure of the overall movement in prices and provide a measure of the change in the cost of living, the growth rates of CPI measures, the weight of inflation, 
if, pos if, if positive or deflation, if negative, acknowledging, acknowledging that strictly inflation or deflation is an ongoing rather uh, ongoing rather than a one-off increased uh, in, uh, increase, uh, slash decrease in the price level. We can write the, purchase, uh, the percentage rate of inflation slash deflation as 4.6, or this is uh, column 4.6, CPI, uh, government, uh, government and taxing, equals 100 times CPI uh, minus CPI uh, slash CPI. Okay, so I'll see you there anyway. So pretty much all three columns of CPIs uh, combined. I mean, uh, where CPI donate, uh, donates, <laughs> denotes the index main magnitude at, at time t, and CPI denotes the change, change of CPI from time t, uh, minus one to time t say one year, so the rate of the change can be expressed as one hundred multiplied by the change on in the index divided by the initial value of the index. It can be readily shown using the data in Table four point two that the respective rates of change for the base and current weighted price index between year one and year two are 40% uh, and 38.9%. You will appreciate that the current weighted index takes into account changes to in prices and the quantities purchased following these price price changes, whereas the price, uh, sorry, whereas the base weighted approach considers price changes only and Changes only and ignores the fact that people will change their expenditure patterns over time as re uh, relative prices change. In practice, household expenditure patterns change and new goods and services are sold. So, statisticians periodically revise the weights in the, ba in, the, in, the basket, in the basket of goods and services in line with other information that they collect. They have compl complex methods to splice the new and the old indexes together. And the new in the next subsection, we explore the biases associated with using the CPI to accurately measure inflation. And we are actually almost done with this chapter, so that's good. <laughs> just saying, just so you know. Anyway, so let's see. Finally, uh, it should be recognized that the that there are other published price indexes, including those based on wholesale and retail prices. For example, the U.S. producers price index based on the wholesale prices of approximately three thousand items, including new materials and semi-finished goods. Difficulties in using the CPI is accurately measured and in measure inflation. Measuring biases. These, uh, there are many difficulties in using the CPI to get accurate measures of deflation. For example, if consumers increase the percentage of purchases at discount outlets, the CPI will overstate the actual state or rate of inflation experience experienced by the typical consumer. This is called the outlet substitution bias because the index does not adequately consider such shifts or yes yeah, shifts in addition we uh, in addition uh, over time consumers will change the composition of the basket of consumer goods which they purchase the composition of the basket used to calculate the prices index is revised on an irregular basis which results in a bias Ec economists identify three different kinds of bias associated with changing baskets substitution bias equal uh, quality change bias and new product bias in addition there is growing recognition of a fourth kind of bias the formula bias substitution bias refers to uh, you know, refers to the impact that change in relative prices would have uh, would have on the composition of the bastion. If, for example, the price of tea rises relative to that of coffee, economic theory suggests that consumers will substitute coffee for tea. However, as the CPI bastion might be changed only once per decade, it might, well, no, it may be some time before the switch to coffee is reflected. The index will calculate or will be calculated as if no substitution had occurred, leading to 
uh, a overstatement of inflation due to sub substitution bias. Often when prices rise, this reflects increases uh, the quality of products. Uh, products might last longer or provide a higher level of services. In most cases, it is very difficult to calculate what portion of a price increase should be attributed to quality changes. The uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, or BLS, for example, does not even attempt to calculate it, this for many products. Thus, inaccurate measures of quality change introduce a quality change bias, which would normally be expected to overstate inflation because it under underestimates the quality changes that justify the higher prices. Thirdly, new products are introduced at, uh, all the time. BLS includes these in the basket only with long and variable lags, which introduces a new product bias into the CPI in the case of some goods and consi uh, a considerable bias results. For example, many high technology consumer goods follow a price cycle that begins with very high prices for some goods, uh, goods sold to higher income classes, and then prices fall rapidly on the goods are introduced to lower income classes, classes, excuse me, and then prices gradually rise again as the market ma matures if the BLS introduces the goods into baskets only after prices have reached the, their minimum. The CPI will not capture the period during which prices fell rapidly, but will include the mature period over time which prices rise. In recent years, this bias would be expected to be quite important due to the introduction of new consumer electronics and the speed and which uh, with which they can, may be, can become obsolete. There is yet another source of bias called the formula bias. This bias results from of results because price data are collected on a dis, uh, disaggregated, disaggregated basis and then aggregated in a very complex manner that can introduce anomalies. For example, the calculation method used in recent years gives too much weight to items on sale somewhat paradoxically, was it paradoxically, okay, paradoxically, this generates formula-induced inflation as the term uh, and the items go off sale. The degree of this bias can increase with the frequency of uh, rotation of, of outlets, including the, the, in the sample. Because the bias results from the short-run price variability and the use of method that gives greater weight to lower-than-average prices, Researchers have noticed that surveys of average prices actually paid by consumers show rates of inflation well below the rates of inflation reported by CPI for relatively disaggregated components of the consumer basket. While part of this could be attributed to the outlet uh, substitution bias, most of, the, most of it could not. Estimates of uh, the formula bias run as high as six tenths of per uh, percentage points for owner occupied housing and one percent point for one percentage point for uh, for apparel and item uh, often on sale. The housing component. The housing component of the CPI is very large. In the U.S., it is above forty percent of the index, and during high inflation periods, is contributed up to half a measure measures inflation. There are two ways to calculate the contrib contributions of the housing sector to a price index, the flow of services approach or the homeowner or user uh, cost approach. The method currently used in the U U.S. inputted rental cost. It based on the flow of services approach and has been in place since 83. Previously, the BLS had tried to calculate the user cost of housing, but it was believed that this method mixed the investment and consumption features of home ownership. The largest portion of the housing component is shelter services, which accounts for more than two thirds of the house housing components. No component. 
nearly three quarters of the shelter component of reflect owner occupied cost since most Americans own their own homes and rest are, rest are renters cost. Most homeowners costs are based on the owner's equivalent rent. The BLS uses a survey of rent, rental units to obtain data regarding changes in uh, rental price. The results are adjusted through a weighted averaging process and quality of adjustments are made to deal with aging and improvements of the reputation Oh, I'm sorry, the imp imputation of uh, renters' cost to be uh, included in the CPI is therefore straightforward. However, the method used for owner's equivalent rent or OER is most compl uh, complicated. Field agents ask owners for the rental price that the homeowner believes the house could secure. Agents may enter their own est uh, estimate if uh, they believe that the owner's estimate is unreasonable. The survey data are used to establish the base year inputted rent. <clears throat> Subsequent values of implicit uh, rent for given unit uh, are ob obtained by applying the rate of increase of prices of rental units. They are thought to be similar in certain respects location, structure, type, and, and quality to the uh, owner occupied homes or home. <clears throat> there are situations in which this method of calculating inflation of the housing component could lead to erroneous results. For example, where the statisticians input high inflation when actual housing prices are falling, we need not to go into that here. Instead, what we want to make clear is that the construction of an index is difficult subject to controversial, to controversial decision and to error. Further, it is important to understand that CPI comprises components that have inputted prices, prices formulated by statisticians rather than being obtained from markets. And da, da, da. instead, what we want to make okay, oh, I got that. I think let's see, we need not to go into that here. Instead, we uh, yeah, okay. Further, it is important to understand the bank comprises to a lot of prices, as you, as you can tell, and obtain from the markets. This is because statisticians want to obtain a measure of the cost of the relatively complete consumer basket that includes items that are not bought annually, such as housing servicing uh, services enjoyed by those who own their own homes. There is a trade-off made between calculating a CPI that makes a, a hedonic approach by seeking to put a price on the enjoyment received from the entire consumption basket and one that attempts to focus on what is happening to the market prices of purchase, purchased items. The problem with the first is that statisticians must make many uh, guesstimations. The problem with the second is that it does not deal adequately with uh, quality adjustments. What all this means uh, to the student is that you should take CPI measures of the inflation rate with the, with the proverbial grain of salt, especially at low measure rates of inflation. We cannot be sure at the prices of things people buy are truly rising steady or falling. 4.9, measuring national inequality. As discussed above, our measures of national output of GDP and income, GNA, do not directly take account of the distribution of output and income. Uh, economists typically see the Gini coefficient, which is derived from a, a Lorenz curve as an index of income and distribution. The Gini coefficient was developed by the Italian statistician and socio sociologist Car uh, Corrado Gini in 1912. Lorenz curve was devised by American economist uh, Mark, uh, Max Lorenz in 1905. The, the Lorenz uh, curve plots the share, yeah, plots the share of total income received a vertical axis by the lowest x percent of the income. Earners horizontal axis, uh, which is in uh, uh, figure 4.1. It is easy to see that our example, uh, 
that in our example, the distribution is not equal because uh, as we move from the or origin uh, at the left end of the hor horizontal axis, axis, the share of income going to those with the low and lowest income initially increases, increases slowly. As we move to the higher income people, the, the cumulative share of income increases some rapidly. The, the 45 payment, the degree line, uh, for the 45 degree line shows the case of perfect uh, equality so that 30% of people who have 30% of total income, 60% of people have 60% of income or total income and so on. We calculate the Gini coefficient as a ratio using the two areas A and B in figure 1.1, 4.1. Uh, 4.7 Gini coefficient uh, equals A slash uh, 4 plus B. Different shaped Lorenz, uh, or Lorenz curves can generate the same value of the Gini coefficient. In addition, there are different ways to measure income, for example, before or after taxes and before or after income transfer, the Gini coefficient can also may also be represented by an uh, algebra algebra formula. There are also alternatives indexes into the Gini coefficient. It is important to realize that different indexes exhibit different properties and the choices of which index to use uh, to use should be made in light of the objectives associated with measuring inequality. Um, a Gini coefficient of zero means that income is perfectly equal, uh, equally distributed as the Lorenz curve coincides with the line of equality. Alternatively, a Gini coefficient of, of one which Oh, a one means that income is perfectly in inequality distributed. That is, one person has all the income. And, four, and table 4.3 shows the Gini coefficients for all of the nations that, are be that belong to the Organization for Economic Co Cooperation and Development, or OECD, for which comparable data is available for the, year, for the years two, 2004 and 2012. The data are based on disposable income, after taxes, and transfers. The Gini coefficient mostly ranges between the da the data are based on uh, between the values of 0 0.25 to 0 0.50. There is a considerably considerable diversity uh, diversity among those nations with respect to the income and the quality. Sweden had the least inequality in 20, 2004, while Mexico had the highest inequality in both years. The U.S. Ha USA has the highest inequality of rich development uh, developed nations, while the Scandinavian countries tend to enjoy the lowest inequality. Noting a uh, note also that inequality increases uh, increased in many nations between 2004 and 2012, while it declined in other nations, indicated by plus and minus signs. <coughs> um, okay, so let's see. The co uh, the Gini coefficients for uh, zero e zero e uh, OECD nations 2004 2012 Australia 2004 uh, 0 0.315 um, and 0 0.3.2 uh, uh, 0 0.324 in 2012 uh, that's a plus Australia has 0 0.269. Uh, in 2004 and 2012 was 0 0.276, which was a plus. In Belgium, it was 0 0.287 in uh, 2004. And in 2012, it was 0 0.262. That was a minus. Czech Republic in 2004 was 0 0.269. In 2012, it was 0 0.252, which was a minus. Estonia, it was in 2004, 0 0.346, and in 2012, it was 0 .2, uh, 0 0.326, rather, which is also a minus. Finland was in uh, 0 0.267 in 2004, and in 2012, it was 0 0.261, so that was a minus. France, minus. Uh, Germany was a plus. 
Uh, see, that was uh, by the way, that was in France, it was in 2004. Uh, see, that was was that uh, 0 0.283 compared to 0 0.306 in 2012. Uh, in Germany, it was 0 0.285 compared to 0 0.289. Again, those are pluses. Greece uh, was a plus, but it was a 0 0.336 in 2004 and compared to 0 0.340 in 2012. Iceland was 0 0.26, or no, sorry, 0 0.262. Uh, in comparison, 2012 was 0 0.252, which was a minus. Uh, okay, so let's see. Yeah, uh, yeah okay, so... Uh, continuing on with that, in, uh, Ireland was 0 0.323 versus 0 0.302, which is 2012. Uh, as a minus in Italy, it was uh, in 2004, 0 0.331 versus in 2012, it was 0 0.326. Now, as a minus, Luxembourg was uh, in 2004, it was 0 0.263 versus 0 0.299. That's a plus. Mexico was 0 0.474 in 2004, and then 2012 was 0 0.4, 0 0.482, which was a plus. Norway was a minus, which was in 2004 was 0 0.276, and 2012 was 0 0.253. Poland was 0 0.381 in 2004, and it was 0 0.300 in 2012. Uh, as a minus, uh, Portugal was a minus, uh, Slav Republic was a minus, uh, Slovenia was a plus, Spain plus, Sweden plus, United Kingdom plus, and United States is a plus. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go all the way through with the numbers as far as the part goes. Anyways, the conclusion. Uh, as we and uh, as we get to the end of the chapter, this chapter introduced the system of national income and production accounts or product accounts or NIPA, the framework adopted by countries to measure economic activity, gross domestic product CP, CDP, CDP, sorry GDP and gross national income, which was GNI were defined and the components of each were examined. Some of the difficulties of measuring outputs were discussed. Alternative ways of measuring growth and inflation were presented, including most importantly, the use of consumer price index. Finally, the text discussed the Lorenz curve and the Gini coefficient, which is used to measure national inequality. Now tomorrow, uh, hopefully it's not as, Long as the page, uh, long as the chapter. I'd like to thank you guys for for hanging on as far as so far. Anyway, again, this is a book with about thirty two to thirty five chapters. So, and again, this is Macroeconomics by William Mitchell or Bill Mitchell, L. Randall Ray, and Martin Watts. But number chapter five is labor market concepts and measurements. I will be doing that tomorrow, hopefully. And let's see, this is a pretty decent sized chapter itself as well. So again, uh, thanks for uh, listening to this. I hope you do decide to subscribe. And I hope you decide to comment. Uh, hit that like button, hit that bell. If you want more information about modern monetary theory and everything that, that goes with it, uh, you can go on to realprogressive.org. You can also look up Steve Grumbine on Status Coup with uh, Uranium Grumble. Also, uh, Rogue Scholar on YouTube and also uh, Macro and Cheese on Real Progressives, uh, Real Real Um and quite a few of the things that Real Progressives is involved in. Anyways, uh, I'd like to thank you again for listening. Once again, please subscribe, please comment, please hit that like button and the bell. And share, share, share. Peace out for now. Thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.